and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new plaid stencils. These stencils are so awesome. They come in a pack of two and you can do either stripes or plaid with them. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here are the two stencils included in the pack. You're gonna ink them up like this and then you're gonna rotate them 90 degrees and ink them up again. So we're gonna go ahead and show you some examples and then make two really cool cards using the plaid concept and then the striped concept. So I just added a little tape runner behind my cardstock piece just to secure it firmly to my stenciling board here. And I'm gonna take those stripes and make sure to line them up nice and straight with the grid mat and I'm holding them down with these magnets. You could also hold them down with some post-it note tape or washi tape as well. This is just a little magnetic board that I happen to have. Now here I'm going ahead, I'm inking up that whole stencil and now I'm gonna take the whole thing, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and then we're gonna line it up again. Once again, using that grid mat to help me line it up. Once I've got that in perfect placement, I'll hold it in place with the magnets or you could use tape and then we're gonna ink over this again. And so this is starting to create the plaid and actually I personally love the plaid that is just with the one stencil. I think that looks really, really cool but you can add even more detail by taking these thinner stripes. So I'm actually looking through the stencil and lining up those stripes so that they're in between the lines I just created. Once I find that perfect placement, I can hold it in place with the magnets and then ink it up. I've done ballet slippers and then peach fuzz ink here. I thought it was a really fun kind of summery color combo. So I've got my first set of stripes there and I'm gonna rotate it 90 again and then line it up again. Once again, looking through the stencil so that I'm adding these stripes to the more blank areas instead of adding the stripes on top of the color that I did with the pink. So we're gonna ink this all up again. I'm using a blender brush here. A foam ink blending tool would be great too. And now when you remove it, you can see this awesome plaid that exists. I love that now I can create any custom color of plaid that I need for my cards. Next up, I wanted to create a more subtle background. So I'm gonna once again line up my stripe here using the grid mat lines there to help me line it up nice and straight. And I'm inking up with some manatee ink, which is a nice light gray ink. And manatee happens to be my favorite animal. I think they're just so cute. So I'm gonna ink up that whole stripe and move that. You can see, I like the stripe just by itself. And also like how much do I want to make candy cane stripes with that too? It's gonna to be so fun for Christmas. So I've rotated that stencil 90 degrees, just like we did before, and then I'm gonna hold it in place with the magnets and ink it up again with that light gray ink. So I'm inking up along all of those lines and now you can see the awesome plaid we have going already. Now I'm gonna take out the thinner stripe. And once again, I'm gonna take time to line the thinner stripe up. So you can see I'm looking through the stencil and making sure those wider lines are right in the center of that plastic. So I kind of look and see, mm, it's all lined up. Those thin stripes are right in the middle of that white area. And the gray stripes are right in the middle of the kind of covered up plastic part. And then I'm gonna take some butter ink, which is a nice soft yellow. And this is gonna be very, very subtle, but that was kind of the look I was going for here. And so I'm just going to ink up all of those thin striped lines. Once these are all inked up, I can take my stencil and rotate it 90 degrees. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look through the stencil, make sure my stripes are centered in that white area. Once it looks nice and centered and everything's kind of crossing each other with those perfect squares being created, I can then take my magnets and hold my stencil in place and ink it up with that butter light yellow ink again. Now this whole background is done and I am just obsessed with this gray and light yellow. I think it's so pretty. It actually reminds me of my friend Deb. She has these grays and yellows in her house that are so beautiful. And I just think it's so fun. And I love that I was able to create this custom inked plaid. These plaids would make great backgrounds and you could kind of use them like pattern paper. And Shari's gonna show us two amazing cards where she does that. But I also wanted to show you that they're great for die cutting elements. So here I've die cut this super cute heart that now has a custom colored plaid on it. And you can actually use that heart window for something too. And then on that gray one, I'm gonna use the brand new Giant Sending Big Hugs die and we're gonna die cut that out of the plaid. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the die cut machine and look how beautiful this is. I love that plaid on there. It's super subtle, but I think it adds such a beautiful effect and I can't wait to make a card with this. So here is a comparison between our die cut heart and our die cut sending big hugs. And next up, I wanted to show you an easy way to create a little bit of a less busy plaid and I got this idea from Elise. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the larger stripe just like normal. So we're gonna ink up this whole stripe here. 
Then what we'll do is we'll remove the stencil and we're not gonna use the large stripe again. We're gonna go now to the skinny stripe and we're gonna have the skinny stripe in the opposite direction. So the stripes are going in the opposite way and we'll line those up so that they're nice and even and then we'll ink that up. And by just doing one of each, you're gonna get a little bit more of a subtle plaid and it's really pretty. Elise did this tone on tone so she had pink cardstock and then inked over it with pink ink and it looks amazing. So I love this look too when you're looking for something just a little more subtle. And then here's a look with that cute little pink heart on top of it. I think it's just a nice little background. I just adore how it looks. And next up, Shari is going to make two adorable cards, one using the plaid way and one using the stripe way with a rainbow technique. So take it away, Shari. So I'm really excited about the new plaid stencil, and I'm going to be creating a background like this. This was my practice, which turned out really super cute and I'm going to be making the same pattern but I'm going to use a slimline die cut because I'm going to make a strip that goes down the center of my card. So this is just a fun way to make that strip. You've already got the width and you've got that fun stitching detail on the left and right side and then you can just cut off the excess at the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to line that up on my magnetic grid mat here and just tape it down so it doesn't move around. And then I'm gonna use my grid mat to help me line up my stencil. And actually I found that using the grid mat to help me line up my stencil, I almost didn't even look at what I had stenciled to line it up. I really just looked at the grid and it turned out perfect. So for the first color here, I'm using some mermaid ink and my blending brush. And I'm just going to go all over this panel, building up the ink until I get a nice smooth look and a nice saturation of that color through these stripes. And it doesn't matter if I go off the edges, that's going to get cut off. So I didn't bother to mask off the edge of my stencil. Now I can turn it. 90 degrees and you can see how that plaid is going to work and I'm lining it up with my grid mat again and that's going to put my stripes perfectly placed or I should say my plaid perfectly placed in the middle of my panel. So you can see now when I'm going over with that same mermaid ink again where those stripes cross over I'm going to get some darker spots and where it's the first time I'm inking, I'm gonna get some lighter spots. And look at this really cool plaid. And this is just with the first stencil. There's two stencils in this set, so you get this one with the really thin lines, and they are designed to go between the lines of the first plaid. So you can see I've lined that up. I'm just moving my magnets in so it holds it a little bit better. And I'm going to go in with some Blue Jay ink on this one. And I just thought that these really thin lines in this Blue Jay ink were just so striking going through that mermaid plaid. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and line it back up again. So you can see through the stencil where those lines are lining up. But honestly, I kind of was just going from my grid mat and lining it up with the grid. So I'm going all over with that Blue Jay ink again. And once I've got it all nicely coated, I can pull that off and we have this really awesome plaid. So I've got a craft card base here and this is just gonna go right through the center. Again, I'm using my grid mat to help me line that up evenly spaced in the middle and at the top and the bottom. And you can see how that plaid is going to be just wide enough to where it goes off the top and the bottom of the card so I can trim it off. And that plaid's going to go all the way from the top to the bottom of my card. Now I have a stitched heart that I've die cut from some guava cardstock. And I just thought that this would look really great sitting on that plaid. So I'm just going to center it up a little bit towards the top. And then for my sentiment, I'm using the Long Distance Hugs stamp set, and I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I'm using some Blue Jay cardstock, and I've just put my anti-static embossing powder all over it. I'm going to stamp that scripty hugs in some clear embossing ink and add some white embossing powder to that. Now before I heat that up with my heat tool, I'm going to do the same thing with the word sending and I'm stamping this in the top corner because I'm just going to cut it into a little rectangle like it's a little banner with the word sending. 
So once I have both of those with the powder, I'm just gonna take my heat tool and heat that up till it's melted and you get that bright white sentiment on that dark blue cardstock. That Scripty Hugs has a coordinating die, so I'm just gonna line that up and hold that in place with a little bit of washi tape and run it through my die cut machine. And then I can take that little sending and just trim that down with my paper trimmer so I get this little rectangle with the word sending. I'm just gonna add some liquid glue to the back of that Scripty Hugs. You can see I've already put my sending on there. It's not glued down just yet, but it's there as a placeholder because I really like how the sending kind of tucks into the top of that Hugs word. So I'll just add some liquid glue to the back of that as well and glue that down at the top of my heart. And I use that Blue Jay cardstock because it matches that Blue Jay ink, so it pulls in that dark blue and you get that nice striking contrast of that white embossing on there. Now you can see, this is what I do. I cut out a whole bunch of these hearts and stars. I just ran that whole die through my die cut machine with my gold glitter paper. And I'm not gonna use all these, but I have them to use in the future. And I'm just gonna add some of the little hearts cut out of that gold glitter. And I just love that look of that gold glitter on that plaid. I'm just adding some dots of the glue and just picking it up with my tweezers and setting it back down. And then what's left in the bowl, I'll just keep in a little container on my desk to grab for embellishments for future cards. And then here is my finished card, and I just love that plaid, and I can't wait to try out more color combinations. Now for this card, I wanted to show you how you can use that plaid stencil just to make some really cool stripes. So I've got a panel of Bristol cardstock cut with the largest outside in stitch rectangle. So when we put this on a card base, it's going to be slightly smaller. And I'm just going to line up that larger stripe stencil onto this panel. Again, I'm using my grid mat as a guide, so it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to be using all these colors to make a rainbow stripe across my card. So I'm starting out with some worn lipstick. I would say this is at the top, but it's actually gonna get turned, so it's gonna be on one side of the card. Next, I'm gonna go in with dried marigold, and you get this really soft look using the Bristol cardstock. And then I'm just gonna go back with that worn lipstick and blend those two together, pull that worn lipstick color down a little bit. Now I've got some scattered straw and my goal with this is to get towards the center line of my panel because I've got six colors and this is my third one. And then I've got shabby shutters. So you can see I moved my magnet over onto my inked part because it was moving a little bit on me. I feel like the magnets hold much better once they're in the center sometimes. So it's if it's moving a little bit, that's my tip. Just move the magnets around. Sometimes you can get a better grip. Next, I've got some tumble glass. And then finally, I've got some milled lavender. So I'm going to go back and forth between them, make sure they're blended nicely. And once I have this looking the way I want, I'm going to remove that so you have those nice stripes. And then I'm going to take the thin stripes and line them up in between. So instead of doing a plaid where we have things crisscross, we're just going to do some stripes. I think this would look really cool as red, for like, like a peppermint at Christmas. I think that would be fun. And then I'm just going to go in with my same colors. There's no real reason why I'm working from the bottom up this time. It's just the way the ink pads were on my desk. So I started again with that milled lavender, then I did the tumbled glass. Now I've got the shabby shutters, then scattered straw for my yellow. Dried marigold for my orange.
And then finally some worn lipstick for the pink at the top. And when I pull this stencil away, you're gonna see this fun rainbow stripe that we've made. So I'm going to fill this card with some hugging critters from Happy Hugs, but I wanna give them a little bit of ground to stand on. So I'm gonna be stamping the sentiment from that stamp set that says, remember hugs? Can't wait to hug you across the bottom. This is cut from some narwhal cardstock and it is the same stitch rectangle as the background. So it's gonna fit right on the background and I'm just gonna trim this off once I get the sentiment stamped. And I'm just gonna trim it in a straight line. So you can see that lovely rainbow stripe panel that I've created there. This is gonna go along the bottom, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some glue to that, stick it down. And then I'm going to put this onto a card base that's made from some mermaid cardstock. So we're gonna get a little of that teal color peeking out around all the edges of this stripe panel. So now I can start to arrange my critters. I colored and cut them out earlier using the coordinating dies, and these are all from the Happy Hugs stamp set. And I just arranged them how I wanted them on my card. I'm using some thick and thin foam squares so we get a little bit of height difference between them. That lets me tuck these cute little squirrels that are looking the other direction behind the tail of the fox there. And I just love these little tiny birds that fit into that thought bubble. I just think that is so cute. And then finally the little mice. And I'm using some thin foam squares on the mice as well so that they can kind of look like they're tucked behind the squirrel. Now if you remember those gold hearts, I cut all those hearts when I did the plaid card. Of course I have those on hand and I'm going to add some of those to embellish around on my rainbow stripe card here. And then my card is all finished and I love that soft rainbow stripe that I created using ink for the background. Thank you so much for those gorgeous cards, Shari. I am obsessed with this rainbow stripe background and I now wanna make it on every single card. It's absolutely beautiful. And then I love how you use the plaid as an accent on this card. These stencils are so much fun because you can get the stripe look and the plaid look. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And first up, we have this card by Audrey. And how genius is it that she kind of blended the plaid halfway through the card? I thought that turned out so beautiful. Elena used two different colors on the skinny stripe part of the plaid, and I think that looks amazing. It's so much fun and such a happy and bright background for this cute card. Elise created a tone-on-tone -tone plaid for the background of her cute little bear birthday card, and I love this look so much. And then I love what she did in her next card. Here you can see she just used one angle of the thicker stripes and one angle of the thinner stripes. It creates a much less busy plaid, and it's a beautiful background for this giant sending big hugs. She repeated the same idea over a slimline card, and I love that she has pink cardstock that she's then inking over with darker colors of pink in the more subtle plaid technique. It's absolutely beautiful, and I just love it, and I can't wait to make a card just like this one. Letitia's bold plaid blows my mind. I love those pinks and oranges and yellows. It's beautiful. It's got this rainbowy feel, and it's so happy. I just love it. We cannot wait to see what you guys do with this plaid stencil, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.